Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft resource pack tutorial. Today's tutorial is on custom models, whether that be blocks, items, or other things. I'll be showing you how to make the model using Blockbench, maybe show you a few useful plugins that I have, and then we'll get it working inside of the game. I'm sure you can already think of how custom models could be useful for tons of different things. And if this tutorial is useful, consider subscribing. Just a thought. If you go to blockbench.net, you can either download Blockbench, or you can open the web app, which runs just the same but in your browser. But no matter where you're running it, this should be similar to what you see when you open it. Ignoring a few things like this, those are some of the plugins I have. Going over the UI, up here at the top we have File, which is where we can create a new model, open a model, that sort of thing, and we also have Plugins. Edit is mainly only used inside of your model, along with Tools and View, but you can check out the Help tab if you ever need anything. Going through my plugins, we'll go to File and Plugins. You can see the ones I have here. I have Optimize, which is to optimize the app. I have Player Statue Generator to generate player models. I have Minecraft Title Generator, which you may have seen in my thumbnails. And Animated Java, which you can use to make custom entities. If you would like to install any new plugins, you can go to Available and find them here. Keep in mind that some of these are for Bedrock Edition, or even just not for Minecraft at all. To get started, we will come down here to Minecraft and select Java Block Slash Item. And down here, we will hit Create New Model. In here, we can give our model a name. For this block, I want to try and design rainbow wool. So like wool that you would expect to get from a jeb sheet. So I will call it rainbow underscore wool. Make sure you have no spaces and no capital letters. And you can hit confirm. Now in here, you'll see a bit more. Here's your main workspace. You can click to move around, right click to move the viewport. You can just right click to get some options. You can go for an angle or you can screenshot that sort of thing. And you can scroll to zoom in and out. Down here, you can also use this coordinate plane to navigate. And if you select one of the sides, you can go into orthographic view, which eliminates perspective. To get out, you can just click back down here and move. Up here, we see our different tools. We have move, scale, rotate, pivot, vertex snap, and knife. Here we can enable mirror modeling, and here you can change your transform space. I would just leave it at parent. Over here we have our textures. We have our UV view, and we have our texture palette. You can import a texture, create a texture, or create a texture group. Up here you have your view stuff, so you can enable and disable shading, you can change your view mode, so we have textured, solid, solid with marker colors, wireframe, and UV preview. And preview here is just the same menu that comes up when you right click. Over here we have our objects. We have our element view, where we can edit settings about our object. We can add a cube, create a group, and toggle more options, which here we won't see much up here other than some tooltips. But up here you have the Paint tab, where you can paint your model. You have your textures, of course, and you have your color palette, as well as a list of your objects. We will go over these tools later. And finally, you have your Display tab. This is where you will edit your object to look right on the player model. Back in Edit, getting started, we will create a cube. So here you can see we're in the move tool, which lets us move it around. And if we have our object selected over here, up here you can see our settings. So we can change the size, like this. We can change the pivot point, which changes how it rotates. So here it rotates along there. But if we change our pivot point, you'll now see it that it rotates around that point. You can double click on any value to reset it. And by clicking this button, it will center the pivot at your object location. 
We also have inflate where you can change the size in every direction like that. But let's make this a full cube. So each one of these full boxes is 16 by 16 or the size of a normal block in Minecraft. And you can see here on the center grid, we have the individual pixels. If we hit S, we can go into size and change our size to 16 by 16 by 16, as you can see up here. And that is our full block. Now, before we paint it, let's make a resource pack to export this to. In Minecraft, you can go to Options, Resource Packs, and Open Pack Folder. This will open your Resource Packs folder, and in here, we can make a new folder for a resource pack. I will call mine Tutorial, just like that. And I'm going to open this with Visual Studio Code. We need to create a new file called pack.mcmeta. In here, I will add some curly brackets, pack, some more curly brackets, pack format, and the new resource pack format for 1.21.5 is 55, comma. And on the next line, we will put a description, which we can just leave blank. Hit Control S to save that. And we'll create a new folder called Assets. In Assets, we need a namespace folder. So no capitals and no spaces. I will call mine Tutorial. In here, we need three folders. We need one called Items. We need one called Models. And we need one called Textures. Now, back in our file explorer, I'm going to try and find this. So we have tutorial, and there we go. We have textures. In both textures and models, we need to create a new folder called block. And I'll copy this into models as well. And here in the textures one, we will put our textures for this block. So for now, I'm just going to paste in the Minecraft red wool texture. I'm going to rename it to match our block. So rainbow underscore wool. And I'll show you how to get this rainbow in a second. But back in Blockbench, if we go to import texture and we find our resource pack, we can go in here and find our rainbow wool. And now if we import that and drag it onto our model, if you drag it onto one side, it only appears on that side, which you can fix by clicking this side and hitting apply to all faces, but it's easier just to drag it onto the whole cube, just like that. We can also create a texture. So if we do this, I'll name it test. And in here, you may want to turn off rearrange UV. Rearrange UV will let you edit the texture for every single side of your block but it'll make your texture a lot bigger. If each side of your block uses the same texture, you can just turn this off. And there you go, you have a custom texture. But I don't want that one, I want my rainbow wool texture. If I wanted to edit it here in paint, I could do that. Same controls as in the edit tab. Over here you can pick your color. And up here we have a paintbrush, so we can draw on our model. Remember that hitting Control and Z will undo your last move. We also have the copy brush. You can hover over your model, hit Control and click to select, and then you can paint over your model using your model. You probably won't use this one too much. Next, we have the paint bucket where you can fill the entire texture. We have Erase, where you can make a part of your texture invisible. We have Color Picker, where you can pick a color on your texture to paint with. We have Draw Shape, where you can draw a shape on your model, like this. We have Gradient Tool, where you can create a gradient from one texture to another, like that. And we have the Selection Tool, where over on this side, you can select a portion of your model, and then you can move it somewhere else. Most of the time, though, you're going to be working with the paintbrush, paint bucket, and erase tool. And finally, display. In display, you can see our block is a bit too big, so maybe we want to scale it down over here. So we could do that and scale it down. But we don't want to have to go through and fine-tune this every time we want to make a new model. So, since we're making a block, 
we can just come up to this apply preset, hover over the three dots on default block, and click apply to all slots. And there you go. We can see it in our hands. We have the block. In our first person, we have the block. Even on our head, we have the block. On the ground, there it is. And same for the item frame and GUI. So now that we're done setting that up, we can hit Control S. We can save it as a Java block slash item model. And of course, find our resource pack and save it under models block. Just like that. And in Visual Studio Code, if you go under models block, you should see your model there. And in here, you can see what this looks like. To get this working in game, we need one more thing, which is under items. Under items, we make a new file, and I'm going to call it rainbow underscore wool dot json. In here, there's actually a ton of cool things we can do, like changing the model if you're pressing a certain key, but I'll save that for a separate tutorial. For this one, we just want our model showing up. To do that, I'm going to put some curly brackets, model, some more curly brackets, type, and here in quotation marks, we want Minecraft colon model, comma, and then our model is going to be tutorial block rainbow wool. Control S to save. Now that should be working in Minecraft. Put on your resource pack and start your world. And in our world, we want to do slash give ourself. You can do any item, but I'm going to do a stick. And here's the important part. Open square bracket. We need to give it item model. And in quotation marks, we're going to do our namespace. So tutorial colon and then the name we put under items. So mine was rainbow underscore wool. Just like that. And there you can see it looks like red wool. I mean, we can't place it down. It'll behave like a stick, but it looks like red wool. But it's obviously not rainbow, so how do we get that working? For that, you can go to photop.com. It's literally Photoshop for free in your browser. So open from computer, find your resource pack, and we want to find the texture that we are changing right here. You can hit Alt and scroll to zoom in. And here we need to have all the wool stacked on top of each other. So to make room for more, I'm going to use this crop tool here. Up here where it says free, you want to change this to fixed size. And our width is going to be 16. And since there's 16 colors of wool, 16 times 16, we need 256 for our height. Now, if you click, you can see the outline for that. So make sure that your red wool is right here at the bottom, just like that, and hit the check mark. Now, before you click anywhere else and mess things up, switch back to the move tool. If you scroll down, you should see it right there. Now to add the rest of the wool, I'm going to go up to file and open and place. In this folder, I have all of the wool colors. So I'm going to copy all of them in except for the red one. And now that that's done, we can scroll up and here they are. It doesn't really matter what order they're in, but I'd like it to kind of follow a rainbow pattern. I believe it starts at the top. So let's move our red up there. Maybe zoom out to make it a bit easier and you should see it snap to the top left. Now if we zoom in up here, we can add in our orange. We can click our orange, drag it up under the red, and take it up to the top here. Do the same for the yellow. It's already under orange, so I'll drag it up here to right below the orange. Next is lime, so drag that up under yellow and take that up here. Next is green, so do the same. You get the idea. But now here, if I drag the pink down, now if I want to go get the magenta, drag that up here, it selects the pink instead. So to fix this, Control z to go back to before we moved the pink. Instead, I want to select all the ones under our light blue here. And I'm going to move them down to the bottom. 
so they're always under it. And now we can keep going. And now that we have our full rainbow here, we can hit Control S and click the Save Changes up here. And now we're almost done. We have to do one final thing, which is in Textures, Block. We need to add a new file, give it the same name as our rainbow wool here. So rainbow underscore wool dot png and now dot mc meta make sure you have the dot png in there and here some curly brackets animation some more curly brackets frame time i think i'll try four comma and we want to do interpolate true control s to save now back in Minecraft, if you hit F3 and T at the same time, you'll reload your resource packs, and you can see our rainbow wool layer. I personally think this is going a bit fast, so just bring back up this file and change the frame time. Let me try 12. Make sure you save it. And if you hit F3 and T to reload again, there, it's a bit slower, and I think I like that. One thing I think I should show off before I go is that if you have the default Minecraft files, I have a tutorial in the top right on how to get those. You can go to Open Model, and in the default pack here, you can go to Models, Item, open pretty much any item, and here you will see this puzzle piece. If you unlock it, this is a texture mesh. And if we copy this with Control c and paste it in our own thing. First off, I think I'm going to rename this to Texture Mesh, just like that. But now if we import a texture, how about a gold ingot? You can see here that it automatically makes the model for you with these little side bits, which can be really helpful if you just want to make an item. So I hope this helped you. I'll have some tutorials coming up soon on custom items and blocks, so make sure you know how to do this before those. As always, if you would like to join my Discord for help or pretty much just anything, a link to that will be in the description. And I mean, if you're going that far, you might as well subscribe. But with that, see ya!